This lesson is for section 2.2 on the definition of the derivative. We have two objectives for today. Um, first, we're going to introduce you to the definition of the derivative, and then we'll use that definition to find the derivative of a function. Then our second objective um, is something we might not get to in this particular lesson. It just depends on how long it takes us to get through the first two pages of this particular note sheet. But we want to determine if a function is differentiable. Now the process of finding a derivative is called differentiating. So when we want to decide if a function is differentiable, we have to look at specific characteristics um, and using limits determine if the function is differentiable. So we'll get to that in the second part of the lesson. So let's first talk about the definition of the derivative. So the same limit that's used to show the slope of a tangent line at a certain point P here, so in other words, if we try to move Q closer and closer to P, we look at the limit as H approaches zero. <laughs> we look at the limit as H approaches zero of that difference quotient. And as you can see here in the definition of the derivative, the derivative of a function is the function F prime. So we say F with this little mark here. We call that F prime. Its value at x is given by the limit as h approaches 0, again, of that difference quotient. So we're using the same limit here to define the slope of the tangent line and also our, the derivative function. Okay, So you have to note that this is a function in itself. Okay, So when we look at the derivative, we're talking about a function. And it also happens to indicate the slope of the, the tangent line at that value of x. Now, because I can change the notation here slightly, I can also say that f prime of a, so this is another alternative definition here for uh, the derivative of function, that's equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. So we do have various meanings for this derivative, and below I've got them outlined here. So we say that f prime of x is the derivative of f of x, but we can also interpret this as f prime of a, that's the slope of the curve at x equals a. So it's the slope of f of x at x equals a. So I'll actually show that to you graphically so you can see what I'm talking about there. We also say it's um, f prime of a, the derivative, is the slope of the tangent line at x equals a. Right? We're using the same exact limit, the slope of that tangent line. Um, we also can say that f prime of a is the instantaneous rate of change of f of x at x equals a. And f prime of a is the velocity at x equals a, provided that your function is um, your function f of x is the position function. Okay, now I think based off of our previous lesson that it's pretty easy to see why um, the derivative represents the instantaneous rate of change of our function at a specific value, or that it represents the velocity um, if your function is a position function. But what I really want to talk about is why um, we can say that the derivative is the slope of f of x at a specific value and um, that it's the slope of the tangent line at x equals a specific value. Okay, so here I have graphed um, a, just a function f of x, and that's the quadratic here in red, y is equal to x squared. And in blue, you see a tangent line to that graph at the point x equals 2. So this line in blue is tangent to the graph of x squared at x equals 2. Now, if I zoom in as far as I want to go, like if I get closer and closer and closer, as you can see, the function and your blue line become pretty much indistinguishable as I continue to increase closer and closer and closer. So what we can say is that this derivative here, which is again the slope of the tangent line, the derivative is really um, a good approximation for the slope of the actual curve f of x. So see how they're pretty much overlapping now as you get closer and closer and closer to um, that value x equals 2, okay? Okay, so back to our note sheet now. Um, off to the right here, under this box that says alternative forms, you're going to see all the different type of notation that might be used to um, express a derivative. So we've started off with f prime. Um, you might also see y prime or dy dx, which just means the derivative of y with respect to x. Okay, so this is something that's very common that you're going to use throughout this textbook as well. Um, df dx also um, is somewhat common, and that's just the derivative of f with respect to x. Um, and I think our book uses this notation as well as uh, this notation down here. I'm not sure if it uses this one very often. But the bottom two just mean the same thing. Again, it's just the derivative of f, or in this case, you would say the derivative of y with respect to x. So these are just all the same way, uh, I'm sorry, they're all different ways of saying the exact same thing of finding a derivative. And then below, there's this little box here that's important for you to um, 
kind of read through as well. dx does not mean d times x, and that same thing goes for dy, um, so don't think it's d times y. Now dy dx should be like expressed out loud as dy dx instead of dy over dx, because when you say over, it kind of implies that you're dividing, and that definitely does not mean to take dy and divide it by dx. It just means the derivative of y with respect to x, okay? Same thing goes for d dx of f of x. This is not saying d dx times f of x. So um, the normal you know, notation where you put two things next to each other and it means multiplication, that's not really what it, this is saying here. Okay, So this is pretty important for you to understand the notation. Okay, and finally, for the last note down at the bottom, um, if you want to evaluate a derivative at a specific value of x, um, you might see the notation written a bunch of different ways, but all of these mean the same exact thing. So I think in our textbook, we start off with just evaluating f prime at x equals a, like this, um, but don't be surprised if you might see something else written like this, okay? All right, so let's get started with our very first example. Now that we have the definition of the derivative, we can actually use that definition to find our first derivative here. We have a function f of x. It's defined as f, uh, I'm sorry, 5x squared minus 8x plus 7. And we want to find f prime of x. So we're going to use the definition. Okay, so the definition states that to find your derivative, you take the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now we're pros at this, so I'm just going to pause real quick and substitute in and then calculate this on my own. All right, so as you can see, I kind of worked through all the algebraic steps here for finding that difference quotient. Um, and one of the things I want to point out is that all of your terms should cancel out so that what you have left over in that numerator, all of the terms here will have some factor of h in them, okay? So that now you can factor out that h, and you're now evaluating the limit as h approaches 0 of 10x plus 5x 5h minus 8. Now, if we are evaluating this limit as h approaches 0, that means this term here will drop. So the limit here is 10x minus 8. So if I just break, I'll bring this down here. Our derivative, okay, f prime of x is equal to 10x minus 8. This is a function, okay, in itself. Okay, now for part B, we want to find the equation of the tangent line at x equals 3. So this is something that we've already done a couple times already in your previous homework, but now we're just using it um, with the application of the derivative. So all we need to do here is find um, the equation by plugging in first 3 into that function so we can find the slope of that tangent line. So the slope of the tangent line is going to be found by evaluating f prime of 3. Okay, so we end up with um, 30 minus 8, so 22 would be the slope of that function. And now for the, the rest of that equation, we need to find um, of a y value and an x value. Well, we already know the x value. It's supposed to be 3. We're, what we're missing now is a y value. Now to get that y value, you have to plug it into the original function, f of x. Okay, so that's sometimes a little confusing for students. You want to plug it into here because you want to know exactly you curve, some curve, and you're looking for the equation, that tangent line, the only point that you know that lies on that tangent is going to be the point where um, your curve and the tangent intersect. So in this case, we'll plug in 3 into the function here, and we end up with, um, I think I worked it out already. I think it was 28. Hopefully that's right. All right. So um, the equation then of that tangent is going to be y minus 28. Let me plug in the point here. So we have the point 3 comma 28. So we're looking at y minus 28 equaling the slope of that tangent line is going to be 22 times x minus 3. So this is the equation of the tangent line to our, our function, our original function, which was the 5x squared um, minus 8x plus 7. Okay? This is going to be the, the equation of the line that's tangent to this function at x equals 3. Okay, next up is part C, and it says find where the tangent will be horizontal. So we've got some curve here, all right? We want to know when you'll have a horizontal line that will be tangent to that curve. Well, really, all that that's saying is that the slope, right, for, for a tangent line that's horizontal, the slope here is going to be zero. So what I'm going to do is take this function, the derivative function, remember that represents the slope of the tangent line at any value of x, and I'm going to set that equal to 0 because I want the slope to equal 0. So I'm setting f prime of x equal to 0. Sorry, I'm running out of room. Hopefully you're not. Now, if I do that, I have 10x minus 8 equaling 0. 
So if we solve here, we end up with x equaling 4 fifths. This is telling you that when x is 4 fifths on your function, the graph of your function, you will have a tangent that's going to be um, or a horizontal tangent. Okay, So all we have left to do is find out exactly where that is by finding the specific coordinate. So we're going to plug 4 fifths back into, this time, f of x. So we're finding f of 4 fifths to find the actual x, y ordered pair. All right, so after evaluating f of 4 fifths, I end up with 19 fifths. So this is indicating that the tangent will be horizontal when um, you are at the point 4 fifths, 19 fifths on the graph of f of x. Okay, so on the next part of the lesson, what I'm actually going to do is show you some shortcuts for finding the derivative. Using the definition of that limit as h approaches 0 of our difference quotient, that took us a really long time, and that gets really, really tedious. Um, having to do that every single time to find a derivative would be excruciating. So we actually have some shortcuts, but first to figure out what those shortcuts are, um, let's consider the derivative of a linear function as well as the derivative of a constant function. Okay, so over here on the right, I have the graph of some linear function. Okay, we'll call it mx plus b. So m represents the slope of that linear function, and b will represent the y-intercept. Now, if we consider finding f prime of x, so in other words, if we want to find that derivative, we're going to look for the slope of any line that is tangent to any point p on that, that graph here. So as you can see, in blue overlapping that linear function y equals mx plus b, you can see that the slope of this tangent has the same slope as the original function f of x. So since those slopes coincide here, the derivative is simply m. Remember, this represents the slope of the tangent line. Okay, The derivative represents the slope of your tangent line, which happens to be the exact same slope as your linear function. Now using that rule, we can actually find the uh, derivative of any constant function. That's by letting m equal 0. So we're looking at a special case here. If m is equal to 0, then our function f of x is going to equal 0x plus b. Okay. Now based off of that rule, we know that the derivative is going to be the slope of our um, function f of x. So we have f prime of x is equal to 0. So we can extrapolate this and say if we simplify that and write that as f of x is equal to b, we know that f prime of x will equal 0. All right, let's try a couple examples where we are using these actual rules here. So instead of using the limit definition for a derivative, you know, that whole limit as h approaches 0 of that difference quotient f of x plus h and yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Instead of having to do all of that work here, now we can just use those quick rules. So I'm looking right now at a linear function, and I know that the derivative is supposed to just be the slope here. So that's going to be just 2. So f prime of x is equal to 2. Now over here, um, just because that's a negative 1 doesn't mean it's any trickier here. The slope here is negative 1, so f prime of x. I don't know why I was writing it like that. That was weird. So f prime of x is equal to negative 1. And then finally here, we have a function that looks a little goofy. It's e cubed. Now remember, e is just a number. It's about 2.74. Um, so if you're cubing that, you're still going to get another constant. So we have a constant here, which means that f prime of x is simply 0. Okay, another rule that's going to help us simplify the process of finding a derivative is called the power rule. Okay, this one is a pretty cool rule. What this says is let n be any integer. So if you have a function of the form x to the nth power, then to find the derivative, you're going to take n and then multiply it by x and raise that to the n minus 1 power. So it does have this little caveat here. If n is less than or equal to 0, then x cannot equal 0. Okay? Now I'm going to quickly prove this power rule here by using the definition of the derivative. So here you can see I'm starting with the definition of the derivative. And then I'm just substituting in um, using f of x is equal to x to the nth power. So we have x to the h, or I'm sorry, x plus h to the nth power minus x to the nth over h. All right, again, just using the de definition of the derivative. Now when I um, try to, you know, expand this using algebra here, this is simply a binomial expansion, okay, x plus h to the nth power. So I'm going to pause real quick and, and try to expand that. All right, so here you can see in red I've expanded um, x plus h to the nth power. So I'm just using binomial expansion or even Pascal's triangle if that's easier for you to see it that way. And then I'm subtracting away f of x, which is x to the nth power. Now, um, when I'm using this Pascal's triangle, I'm not really showing um, what the coefficients here are because I don't really care about those. What really matters is that I'm trying to simplify this entire expression. And as you can see, x to the nth is going to cancel with that x to the nth all the way back there. Now, what I'm left over with, each of these terms here has an h in them, right? 
every single one of these terms will have an h because these h powers will increase h to the first and h to the second your next term will have h to the third h to the fourth all up until you you know it reaches that power of n now because each term has an h in it that means that um, every single term will factor out one of those h's so the first term here so if i simplify the limit as h approaches zero of this first term now becomes just n times x to the n minus one because i factor out that h okay so I'm canceling out every single h here. So this will now turn into h to the first. So I have, again, something times h to the first plus a whole bunch of other terms maybe in there, and then something. And then this now becomes h to the nth power, OK? Um, plus the last term here would become h to the nth minus 1 power. All right, now the reason why I'm just writing all these boxes here, I don't really care what goes in front of them, is because when I evaluate this limit, everything, um, I'd plug in h is 0 here to evaluate the limit when h approaches 0. So everything actually drops out, every single one of these terms with an h, except for this term here. So the limit as h approaches 0 of x to the nth, okay, or I'm sorry, of your difference quotient here, the derivative, this is going to be n times x to the nth minus 1 power. So that's the proof of it. Obviously, the proof and how you're actually going to use the rule are completely different from one another. Um, I just wanted to show you the background for it. But basically, what we're going to be able to do is now extend that power rule to rational exponents. Okay. So even if um, n is not an integer, we can still extend this power rule to rational exponents. We will also extend it so that if we have a constant out in front, we can separate that constant and multiply it by n. Okay, and still take the nth minus 1 power. So let's do some examples of this so you can see that it's really not too hard. All right, first up, we want to find um, the derivative here of a function f of x when it's defined as x squared minus 3. So based off of our power rule, what we're going to do here, you're going to take that power and multiply it out in front. So this becomes 2x, and then you take that power and you subtract 1 away. So if I subtract 1 away, I end up with 2x to the first. Now I know that the derivative of a constant is just 0, so this ends up being f prime of x is just 2x to the first power. Okay, Let's try it one more time here with now a rational exponent. So here it doesn't matter that it's a rational exponent. We still apply that rule. We're going to multiply out in front here by that uh, exponent. So we've got um, f prime of x, the derivative here is 3 fifths times x. Then we raise it to the power of whatever that number is, minus 1. So we're going to take 3 fifths and subtract 1, and we get negative 2 fifths. Okay, so that's our first term. Now if we find the derivative here of 2x, that is um, to the first power. So we multiply out in front. Okay, now we're just using this rule here. Okay, we multiply out in front, we would get 2. Then we raise x to the 1 minus 0 power. Okay, or I'm sorry, 1 minus 1 power, which ends up being 0. I was thinking kind of ahead of myself. So we have x to the 0 power, which means that that term just drops out. Okay, so here's two different reasons why that ends up being just 2. One, we can use the power rule, or you can use the fact that, hey, this is a linear function right here. We know that the, um, the derivative of a linear function is simply the slope here, so that would just be 2. Okay. All right, let's try c. So for c here, we've got a number out in front, and we've got this rational exponent. It doesn't change how we do this, though. We're just going to multiply this number out in front. So the derivative here is going to be 3 times negative 4 thirds times x raised to the negative 4 thirds minus 1 power. Okay, so let's simplify this. Well, these cancel. I'm left with negative 4 times x. This is going to become negative 7 thirds. Okay, and then let's work on this next portion here. So if we're finding the derivative of this portion of that function here, we would uh, multiply by 2 out in front. So we get negative 4 also. And then we have x, and then that's raised to the 2 minus 1 power. In this case, it would be 2 to the first or, sorry, x to the first power. So there's the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to negative 4x to the negative 7 thirds minus 4x. All right? All right, and finally, I'm going to let you guys try number two here on your own. Now that you know how to find the derivative very quickly here, this is just a position function. So if it's asking you to find the velocity, that means it's the instantaneous velocity, and you're going to do it at two different time periods. So please um, try this one and then check with the key. All right, this is a lot like the question that was on the front side of this note sheet. All right, nice job. See you guys in class tomorrow.